Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Booming Encore's Learning Bites. My name is Susan Williams and I'm the founder of Booming Encore and today I'm joined by Barbara Aerosmith-Young. Barbara is the founder of the Aerosmith program which is an assessment process and a suite of cognitive exercises designed to stimulate and strengthen weak areas of cognitive functioning that underline a range of learning difficulties. Barbara's work began in 1978 and has been recognized as one of the first examples of the practical application of neuroplasticity, which simply put as the ability of the brain to change and rewire itself over one's lifetime. I was really fortunate to have heard Barbara speak at a recent conference on aging, and I'm really grateful to have her here with us today to talk about more about neuroplasticity and the aging brain and what we can actually do to help so welcome, Barbara. Thank you. So Barbara, what exactly is neuroplasticity? It's really actually quite a simple concept. I mean, it, it just means that our brain actually is capable of change across our lifespan. And this change can either be positive or negative. So it just means that as a result of our experiences, the activities that we're involved in, um, if we direct it in a positive direction, we can actually enhance cognitive functioning. So we know that we can grow uh, new neurons, which we didn't know for a lot of years. We know that we can increase dendrites, which are the branches on neurons, which makes for more efficient neurotransmission. So we can do a lot of things in our life that actually will enhance the functioning of our brain. And our brain, we know, is critical uh, not only for learning, but it's critical for our ability to relate to the world. So, you know, our understanding of ourselves, our understanding of other people, our understanding of the world. Um, it actually is also related to well-being and feeling good about ourselves. So the fact that we can actually change our brain in a positive direction through our activities and our behavior, to me, is incredibly positive, hopeful, and optimistic, and as I'm getting older, it's also very positive that we can do this across our lifespan. So just to sort of expand on that a little bit, from an aging perspective, I mean, there's so many different views of, of and, and sometimes they're not necessarily positive views of the aging brain. From your perspective, is this some areas of opportunity for the aging brain then? I think there are incredible areas of opportunity for the aging brain. I mean, I believe as, as long as we're alive, um, we can harness this concept of neuroplasticity. So when I started my work many, many years ago, there was this belief that sort of around age 12, the window of neuroplasticity closes, that basically the brain that you have at that point is the brain that you're going to have for the rest of your life. We actually know that's not the case. I've worked with people into their 80s, and I've seen the same degree of neuroplasticity in an 80-year-old as I've seen in a 12-year-old. And that's incredibly promising and incredibly optimistic. So there, there is always hope. And even you know, people that are, as they get older, starting to feel a little bit of cognitive decline, like you know, where on earth did I leave my keys? Or you know, what was I supposed to get at the grocery store? We can change that. We can actually, through keeping the brain active and stimulated, um, you know, enhance that, that function. So I think it's incredibly positive and optimistic. Wow, that is certainly powerful. So what sort of activities could somebody do to help them and, and, their, brain, and their brain health as they age? Yeah, so there, there are certain fundamental principles that drive neuroplastic change in a positive direction. I mean, the first thing is find something that you actually enjoy, because if you're going to be doing it and you want to sustain the activity, it should be something that brings you some kind of joy or pleasure. So the, the first principle is what I call active sustained engagement. So it really means that you, you need to pick an activity that you're going to do over a sustained period of time. It would be really nice if we could change our brain, you know, one minute a day. Um, it doesn't work that way to make significant change. It, it's sort of like exercise in a sense, like the rule of thumb in aerobic exercise is about 20 minutes a day. The rule of thumb that I found in this work is about 20 minutes a day. So find an activity that, that you want to sustain and engage in for about 20 minutes a day. And then the next component is what I call effortful processing. So if the activity is really, really easy, that's not driving neuroplastic change. You have to calibrate the level of difficulty. It's again like exercise, you know, where you find that sweet spot. You go to the gym and wow, I'm gonna lose five pounds, it's probably not gonna do much. Um, if 15 pounds is, is, you know, a strain or a stress, that's where you start. So you don't wanna start where it's too hard 
or too easy is calibrating the level of difficulty where it's that sweet spot where there's strain but attainable strain so that you can actually um you know you're exercising your brain essentially and then once once you find that activity becomes easy, which it will over time, then you have to up the level of difficulty. So it's, it's again, something that you are going to sustain your engagement with, and you're going to keep making it a little more difficult so that it is actually straining and engaging the brain in the activity. And then there's this idea of complexity, which again pushes this ethical processing. So, you know, you can add more levels to something or you can add more demand to make it a little more complex. So really almost any activity that somebody does, they can add those, those principles into and that will drive positive neuroplastic change. So whether, you know, for somebody it's learning a new language, for somebody it's, it's learning how to dance, it might be minutes a day and the other piece is continually adding a bit more strain um, until that becomes easy and then add a little more more strain and the research is showing that will is what will drive um, neuroplastic change and then there are other kind of what I call general state factors which are really important we know sleep is absolutely critical I mean there's so much research now looking at the negative effect of sleep deprivation on the brain we know sleep is really critical for for memory consolidation so really important these kind of health factors get good night's sleep um, exercise you can't you know avoid all the research looking at, at exercise um, and again the rule of thumb there is if it's good for your heart it's actually good for your brain because it's pumping more blood to your brain there's this um, a brain derived neurotrophic factor uh, which is like a, a, a repair mechanism for the brain um, which gets generated with exercise so all of these kinds of things and reducing stress. We know the impact of stress on the brain. It's, it's, it's you know, generates cortisol. Cortisol you can think of as an acid bath for your brain, which is not good. Um, so, you know, practicing gratitude, meditation, all of those things are neuroprotective factors. So it's almost like CrossFit training for your brain. There's so many different things that contrib can contribute and actually doing all of these sort of things Will, will help sustain your brain health, I'm assuming, then. And absolutely. And it, it doesn't have to be complicated, right? Again, you know, go out for a nice 20-minute walk a day in nature if that's what brings you pleasure. I mean, I think the critical thing, we kind of live in a society where we can be a little punitive and, like, everything has to be hard, right, for it to be good for us. Well, actually, it, it doesn't in this case. Like, find things that you enjoy and then put these elements into into them like you know there's research looking at just keeping a gratitude journal you know five minutes a day actually is neuroprotective and positive for the brain and going for a nice walk they now i think call it forest bathing in japan right you know you just go out and be in nature which reduces um stress uh, you know all, all of these things are really really positive so it doesn't have to be complicated it actually can be quite simple that's great news. So I guess the adage, no pain, no gain, doesn't necessarily apply to this. It's actually finding something you enjoy. So one, that you'll keep going. And two, that you'll actually, you know, have the opportunity to extend the health of your brain by doing some exercises and, and things that you actually enjoy, which is great news. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the other thing I missed is social connection. I mean, there's a lot of research now showing the importance of social connection, social, social relationships um, that, again, are, are neuroprotective. So, again, these aren't complicated things. I mean, the maybe new piece is looking at, you know, in the activity, this idea of sustained engagement. But we know that from physical exercise and effort for processing of calibrating the level of difficulty. But again, it's the same concept in that we have in exercise, in physical exercise. That's great. Well, thanks so much for sharing this information with us, Barbara. It certainly sounds promising, and it's certainly much, much nicer to think that there are opportunities, you know, to help manage and maintain and sustain our, our brain health. And, and these tips that you provided are extremely valuable. So thank you for that. Well, thank you. So for everyone, this ends our edition of our Learning Bites. We hope you found this information valuable and it helps you live your best booming encore. Bye for now, everyone.